Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Thanks for taking another look at one of my videos. This time around, it's rather long, so get yourself a cup of tea, sit yourself down. It's in 4K. It's a 1986 Matchbox Volvo 760. So first of all, thank you for all the likes and comments on all my previous videos. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. It gives me a great buzz to keep on making these videos. So I really do appreciate it. So anytime you want to hit that button, please do. So onto this Volvo now. This is a project that's been sat on my list since the day I started this channel. But one thing and another, it just hasn't been at the front of that project list because other things have come along and I think, yeah, I'll do that, I'll do that. But now it's staring me in the face. There's reasons why I'm going to do this. So I'll tell you a bit later on in this video. But for now, I've got two of these cars, both from 1986, and I'm just comparing them side by side because for some reason, there's a few little anomalies. One of them's got an indicator on one side. The other one's got it completely omitted. The front headlights on the right hand side, one of them's a little bit sloppy. That's across both of them. So I think that was a problem in the, the mold itself. And one of them on the boot lid has got the 760 GLE written on the back, whereas the other one hasn't. So even though they're stamped 1986, there's quite a little bit of differences. So whether there's a fake one knocking about, I'm not saying there is, it's just a little bit odd now. Both of them were made in China. Both of them seemingly look all the same, apart from some little oddities. Don't quite know why. So although I build these as a resto mod, more often than not, this one is probably an imperfecto mod because there's quite a bit of imperfections more than anything that needs restoring on it, really. There's a bit of a bubble in the one that I'm going to choose on the roof. Um, across the windows, uh, across the actual frames of the windows, if you like, like the one on the right now, it's, you know, got a little bit of mold imperfections and it's just a little bit odd, um, which, you know, has, has led me to believe that, or make me believe that perhaps one of these was fake. I don't quite know. I mean, it's other than it being all completely the same, the same materials, it's just really odd. It's got a few little oddities, but Hey ho, I'm going to go with this one out of the two. And I've already done videos on stripping the paint, as I've mentioned in the past, and removing the body. So please take a look at my other videos on my channel, specifically on how to's, how to do that. So we'll skip that process for now and get straight down to the car that I've already stripped. And underneath, as always, once the paint's off and you can see it in nice, clean, bare metal, there's always lots of great detail that is hidden by the often very heavy paint that they chuck on them but under it underneath on the chassis on this it's the the base i like the best with a little spring steel for suspension really easy to remove the wheels really easy to refit the wheels um but here's that little imperfection i'm showing you now at the front and then the one on the roof there this one's got the the doors that come off fairly easy although they are a bit of a pain to put back on especially now the springs popped out as well but not impossible, but I'll get straight on with sorting out these little imperfections on it. Because as I say, there's not really anything to restore on this. There's no, you know, battered parts anywhere. It's just these little odd bits that were manufacturing defects. Uh, and it's not hard to do. Little model file, little sanding stick or sandpaper and just get rid of them parts. Very easy, very straightforward to do. But what I'm gonna do by, you've already seen the thumbnail, so I won't tr try and preempt it, but I'm making this a race car. I'm getting back to doing a race car after I did the last road car Porsche version. I enjoy doing these tin top races, but as any self-respecting racer knows, they don't, tend to use a sunroofed body shell so i'm just gonna put a bit of modeling filler on to cover up that sunroof recess but also just to go in again around these window lines where seems to be a bit of anomaly in the 
the cast in itself. Unlike the green putty that I've used in the past where that dries up rather quickly, this one from Humbrol tends to stay a little bit tacky so it sticks to your fingers a little bit more but it doesn't tend to go off quite as quick so you can still play around with it a little bit. But whilst that's drying I'll go to the wheels and for this project again I'm using some from Turbo Sheep Customs. I'll put all his links uh, to his Instagram and his eBay in the description underneath and they're really good quality these 3D printed wheels. The tyres again I got off eBay somewhere. I'll try and find that link and put it in the description as well. But for the axles I'm using my little paper, paper clip trick. Um, very straightforward. Unfold them, flatten them out. Yes there's lots of different ways. Sticking them in a drill, pulling them through a little hole in a board. I quite like just tapping them out to be completely honest. Um, does what I need it to do. So just on the end of my vise, just give it a light bit of a tapping, straighten it out, and a very simple way is to then put on the wheels, measure out how much you want to chop off, and it really is as quick as that. Once you've measured up roughly where you need it to go simply a matter of trimming them down to size. Painting wise I'm going to just use some Tamiya rattle cam paint again, some chrome metallic. There's very flat painting I'm doing on this car anyway so I'm not going to crack open the airbrush on this one again either so I'm not going to bother primering these wheels either, I can go straight on with it. Oops. A little piece of masking tape just to hold it all down and it's just again a straightforward process. Now I've decided to glue the wheels down this time instead of making my little soldered axles with them being quite a flat wheel on the main face of it even though you can get a nice enough pinhead with a bit of time filing down the solder it still protrudes a little bit too much for my liking so on these specific ones i'm simply just gonna use a bit of super glue a bit of activator to make it go off quick line it up with the face of it and it's pretty much done like that all i need to do is just to simply put it back on again measure up where i need to chop it and then repeat the process the really good wheels these are if you've never used them before he does them in different sizes, small and medium. I think there might be a large. I can't quite remember. Well, there must be a large, otherwise there wouldn't be a small and medium. But all sorts of range that he does. Some really good vintage ones. A bit like the Porsche that I did on the one video previous. But all excellent quality. You have to do no fettling with them whatsoever when you get them. Just simply paint them and stick them on. So I do highly recommend them. And this is the reason why I like this spring steel mounting method. It's just pop them in, job done. There we go. If, uh, you're always going to get a roller with that. No problem. So now it's dried and it does dry quite quick. Uh, within an hour or so, this humble model filler, model putty filler. Sand it straight back. We'll leave just a little bit in the sunroof recess. It's always best to put loads on rather than especially on a big flat surface like this and sand it right back. Otherwise just putting it in that local area you're gonna spend more time trying to get the, the bump down and make it flat than if you just put it across the full roof anyway. So that's why I tend to do it that way. And it sets really nice 
and smooth. Sand's really easy and smooth. And that's the end of it. Now there's a lot of styrene I'm going to do on this. It's been a while since I've put a bit of styrene together, especially one on a project like this. So in my little off-cut drawers, as I said, I, I very rarely took into a new piece, especially on this scale. I'm going to work on the exterior first of all. Um, it's all quite self-explanatory as it's going along. So whilst it is going along in the background, I'm going to tell you a little bit the reasons why I've done this one or brought it to the front or how it's come about. As I said, it was always on my project list. I've always wanted to do this particular car. Although there was never actually a 760, it was the 850 BTCC, or at least I thought, anyway. Now, if I go back to my automotive engineering days, I uh, worked on an amphibious project some 20 odd years ago, and I met some fantastic guys there. And one of them I worked with, uh, we've remained close friends ever since, um, with the only guys that I've kept in contact, ironically. Um, and although there's some 16 years difference between us, to me is is one of the unsung heroes of motorsport. And he was a chief engineer uh, for TWR Arrows F1 team. He worked on Group C Jaguar, silk cut Jaguars for Le Mans. He worked in the Arrows F1 team, part of the TWR he then did. Um, the XJ220 projects, he was full of some fantastic stories. He ducked out for a little bit as well and did uh, Renault F1. Uh, he was uh, Nigel Mansell's chief mechanic. Got some great stories and he plays it all, you know, very low key. He showed me lots of footage and lots of photos and all the history. Uh, he's got some great stories to tell. And over the years, we've sort of stopped talking both out of the automotive game now. We've Stop talking about it and now and again when we get together we always have a little bit of a natter but really I suppose the last five or six years or so we haven't really talked much about it. Anyway a couple of months back uh, I'd been to his daughter's wedding and we got together again a few weeks later and we had a bit of a come down from all the uh, festivities and all the partying and whatnot. We had a nice little get together together my wife and his wife and we're having a good natter and the cars came up again and I happened to mention what I'm doing now, this channel. And he was really interested in it and all the rest of it. And I said, well, yes, what's the next project? And I said, well, actually, I wanted to do this Volvo 850, but they haven't got one yet. Well, Hot Wheels are going to bring one out, uh, an estate one. But I've got a 760 and I want to do the touring car, but they never actually did one. At which point a smile comes on his face. And literally a year or so before we met, at this uh, amphibious project. He was finishing off his years at TWR and they were working on the Volvo uh, C, C70 project, I think it was, the road car projects. And it was all getting a little bit boring for him and all the rest of it. And since he had a family, he'd stopped all the motorsport division and went into the road cars. But there was something was bubbling in the background and he was offered to do the BTCC, touring cars. But prior to it being the 850, if you wind back a little bit prior to that, when he was in his motorsport, when they were in the earlier developments, they were putting the engines in the 760s, or at least developing the motorsport program, which have virtually got canned. And it was canned back in Sweden, I think. I don't think it ever actually made it um, to the UK shores, at least, anyway. But there was, in the, uh, an infancy, a talk of doing the BTCC way back then. They did do it, I think, with the 240s, if, I, if my memory serves, way, way, way back in the 80s. But it got canned. He carried on with other projects. It was all forgotten about. And literally a few months before we met, or sorry, a few years before we met, his last little spell was doing the 850s. And he did it for only about three races in his infancy. And it had enough. Um, his young family was still young. He didn't want the motorsport parade going around and being away from the family at the weekends and all the rest of it. And he just uh, decided to leave. Another project came up and he, he, he left. And a couple of months, sorry, a couple of years later, um, we finally met each other and that bit was lost in translation. Everything else we'd talked about over the years, but this we never talked about. So I said to him now and then, I said, you know what? The next project we're going to do is this Volvo. Okay, 
it's going to be a 760. I'm going to do it in an 850-esque li livery. Back in one of the earlier ones, back in the Q8 colours. Oh, there you go. I've just spoiled it now. Well, you've seen the thumbnail anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, but I'll base it on this 760. So this I'm doing for him. Um, I've got two of these. So one will reside in my collection, but I'm going to do him one as a little nod and a little wink to the friendship we've had over the years. So this one is going to be for him. And now I'll carry on talking about the car that I'm actually building. Um, we've waffled through and we've got to the rear splitter and the rear spoiler. If you've been watching it and uh, not got too bored and walked away and just listening to me droning on, fairly easy to do. All flat pieces. Um, when I build these, when people, sorry, when people have asked me about doing this styrene, I always say, it is a lot easier than it looks. If you've got the right tools, if you've got the knife and you've got the, the mech and a brush to put it all together, think of it like Lego. Most people, you know, love Lego. Most people love Meccano. If you're old like me, you like Meccano. Um, even for the younger generation, the digital generation, my son's Minecraft, think, think of everything needs to be built. Think of it in simple steps, blocks, flats, squares, tubes piece by piece, build it all up. If you're a CAD designer, even better, you'll know exactly how to work your way around it. And don't think of it as one big blob in front of you. Break it down into little pieces, and it's as simple as that to put together. Uh, and on that, I'm on these little side skirts now. I wasn't planning on doing this bit, but then it just sprung out at me. There was a bit of gaps between the chassis and the body. So I've slipped in a little L section another little flat piece along the side just to bring it in line with the body itself and then stuck it on and then once I've taken it apart just trim it down as a quick way rather than measuring it all out again just like this so there we go that's how I did the side steps It really makes a nice a little bit of difference having these little extras all around the car. It's a touring car anyway, so it had all these little aerofoils, bumpers, splitters, spoilers and all the rest of it. So a little bit of sanding here and there now on this one and it does really make this car step out a little bit. It looks pretty good. And the wheels could, you know, if you look at the actual touring car, especially the 851, it had massive wheels on it. Really did fill the arches. But this is the uh, size that they are, these wheels. I can't really find anything much bigger than this. I'm not going to lower it anymore, so I want it to be a roller. So the saving grace with it being a Volvo of this era, this is all quite blocky and square anyway, so making these little extras without massive curves all round has been quite a little bit easy. So here's a little tip that I can't take the credit for. I have seen it somewhere and I can't think for the life of me where I've seen it. So if anybody else has seen it, please let me know and I'll give you a plug. And But all these little offcuts of styrene, you can make some little liquid styrene by putting some uh, of this thinner Tamiya cement into an old Tamiya paint pot. This is what I've used actually. And then with all these little bits, just plop them in. It melts away with the glue and it makes little liquid styrene. So with this matchstick I've made, is you can even do little fine, almost like little rivets. It'll dry solid. Um, has a little bit of a sheen to it, as you can see, but it's great for doing little detail bits that would otherwise be an absolute pain to do with thin sheets. So as I say, I can't remember where I've seen it. So if you've seen it, please give me a shout and I'll, and I'll give you a plug. So onto this front bumper now, it's got nothing because how this chassis fits to the body, it sort of hooks around that front bumper. It's hard for me to put anything on the front to make this bumper lower, but I've seen this little recess in the front of where it hooks in. So once the body's on, I've decided to make a little plug, shove it up there, 
Ua, shove it up, and then um, make a little lower splitter, spoiler, bumper, aerofoil on the front. Again, using all my little offcuts, I could have made a use of a thicker block, really, as a plug to shove it in, but I've used actually three pieces of offcuts again and just sandwiched them together because the big block I had, I would have had to cut down and, and waste that. So I'm I'm being eco-friendly with all my little bits that I've got left over. I'm really not joking when I said I probably haven't bought any styrene in about 10 years. I really, I'm actually starting to throw some bits away now. So it's all coming in rather handy now. And it slots in dead simple like that at the front. And a little bit of sanding and shaping here and there will give me the underneath of the bumper part now that I'm going to stick to this little plug. Don't know why I'm calling it a plug, but you know, it's gone in the hole, but it's a plug. And with some little pieces here and there all around. Once it's all glued up, like that. And with these other little bits now, like this, like that, like this. It does start to get a little bit fiddly. There you go. And we have the main profile of the bumper it's just a matter of smoothing it off you know i said it's good to have this volvo that's nice and blocky yeah you still got to smooth off little bits but round some of the corners so it's not quite so sharp but i try to make the models i create so it does all go together quite straightforward rather than just stick things on and hope for the best so i do try to make things slot on and almost factory finish if you like but there you go you start to get the main profile i just need to add a little bit of filler here and there and resand again just to get this little profile just right and then i've cut away that block again on that lower part just to give it a bit of depth to the bumper if you like a bit more of an air intake like a real car and then all i really need to do to finish this off is just get another little flat piece stick it to the underneath as if it's a lower lower air dam lower splitter if you like and that will be pretty much done for the exterior there you go so onto the interior now, um, same sort of process again. I've done videos on this one as well, but I'm gonna rifle through this one fairly quickly. I'm using the excellent Edition 6 we, um, bucket seat again for this interior, the main basis of it. I'll put the link in the description. And I'll just start off with doing the lower part of this interior because it's on two levels almost it's um quite low in the center and then it goes up quite high at the back so with just some of this square piece i'm just gonna lop two pieces off the end i'll just use this little chopping board so that way i can get them both absolutely spot on by measuring it out there you go there's two little pieces and then once they're bonded to the underside of this little first tier of the interior if you like these will help it from moving around as you can see in the in the background there it'll stop it from moving around between the two pins on the chassis as well so that'll keep it located inside the car and the upper part now is I've just drawn a little profile of where the arches are going to be where the rear screws going to go back into the hole on the back of the chassis and made another little rear piece to it 
so it will now sit on the level like so and once you start adding a little bit of detail to the interior you sort of lose all the shape of this it sort of looks like it's a interior of a car a race car anyway where you see all the little ribs and top hat sections and stuff like that and in the actual chassis floor bed so here I'm just making some little wheel wells um, I tend to put wheel wells in but the last time I did an interior it was for the Mercedes one. I forgot to put the wheel, <laughs> forgot to put these wheel arches in, and there was a few complaints on that saying, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, that's good, that's good." But yeah, we can see through it now. So there you go. I've put some wheel wells in on this one now, so you can not see in, but with a few little other pieces. There you go. That's that little part of how the body flicks into the chassis there but so it does all start to get a little bit fiddly now at this stage um, as long as you don't have a big large cup of coffee so you're shaking like mad with adrenaline afterwards it's uh, it's not too bad but here the rear shelf just going on it's a bit of a pain to stick you have to really lick the mech against the parts rather than put a piece down and stick it down but sometimes you need a must and you have to so a little central tunnel down the center now with a little profiled piece of square like so and we are pretty much they're really on the basis it's just now putting on this steering wheel and dashboard and i've decided not to make one on this occasion i'm just going to simply trim off the existing one and stick them on and a couple of little trimmed up half mil sections for the buttons inside the race car I'm sure it's got more buttons than I can make, but it's a start. <laughs> and then onto the little roll cage. I'm going to make this one out of styrene and not paper clips this time. Really easy, this one mil diameter stuff. You can bend it without having to heat it up or add any warmth to it. It'll bend and conform very straightforward. And if you get it wrong, you can not so much straighten it out, but you can sort of rebend it in another place. But Sometimes it'll stick straight to it. Sometimes, like it has on this occasion, I'll use some little two mil outer diameter tubing and make them as mounting points for the front and back. I've angled the ones at the back, obviously, but it, yeah, here we go. It starts to get a little bit fiddly. So rather than bore you in its entirety watching me losing my temper with this one i'll just quickly skip over the building of this interior roll cage and you'll end up with something roughly as a basis like that i do glue it or use the mech again sorry just to bond it once it's made its little footings like so i prefer this one mil section i think anything bigger and it starts to look a little bit out of scale so once you start getting into all the nitty gritty and adding all the little cross members and side supports and whatnot if you've got it any thicker than this it just all starts to look a little bit cartoony in my opinion so i think this is pretty much the perfect scale one millimeter for these 164 scale cars and if you trim it right better when you use these little footings but if you trim it right it will pretty much stay in situ as you glue it all together fairly it's not as fiddly as it looks if you can just manage to measure it right and at least put a little bit of the bonding agent on it will stick pretty much instantly 
so you're not losing your temper and slatting it up the wall, wall straight away. Not that I ever have, obviously, but. Yeah, I'm fairly pleased with with that. Other than the dashboard and the seat, it's all, well, pretty much off the top of my head, really. It's, um, it's always the same when I make an interior. I don't always look at reference pictures in its entirety. I sort of go off my own knowledge of race cars and just make up my own little roll cage as I go along. So straightforward painting on this is not much to it just the dashboard and the seats so nothing really to shout about when it comes to painting this one a few little white dials maybe well there was on this one uh, but finally for the interior just some little replica harnesses i use some vinyl sticker just cut a slither of it off straight um, as straight as you can and then once you peel it off, it tends to not bend so well because it's a it's a th it's more so short, um, so it won't wrap around that easy. So what I often tend to do is just dab a little bit of glue down and then hold it in in place just for it to dry out as quick as I can. It's it's almost quite rigid. So so finally now it's. Um, Finishing touches really, um, I'm not going to spoil it completely, you've already guessed what livery I'm going to put it in. For me the, the 850s, the Volvo BTCC cars were one of the best touring cars I think, from definitely from the super touring era of the 90s anyway, but uh, the livery, I like the livery as well, it was like nothing else before it, you know, it wasn't a, a Marlborough one, it wasn't a Texaco one, it was... Um, a completely different look for the Q8 oils one, especially when they were in the you know, the RS200s of the day. But quick windscreens and side glass assemblies. Again, with it being a blocky car, fairly straightforward. I'm doing this as four pieces this time and not one big piece bent into section, into its piece, into its place. Whoa, getting all my words mixed up now. So... Fairly straightforward, just these flat pieces to get rid of this bulky, um, rather scratched, battered up one. Anyway, so there we go. Let's have a quick reminder then, back at the start of how this Volvo 760 looked. It was a rather good casting. Um, no real blemishes, really. Just a few um, imperfections, I think, from manufacturing is probably fair to say. But now, here we have my take on what my fantasy BTCC would have been if it was actually a 760. There's a few extra details I've put on it. Um, obviously, I've painted indicators, uh, rear lights, put the little sun strip on the front there with the Volvo on it. There's that painted lower air dam now on the front. Number plates, front and rear. Technically, they don't have number plates, but the uh, registration plate that was on the original casting sticks out quite a lot, and you can't really file that down, which, incidentally, the numbers that were on this Volvo was actually registered to a Jaguar E-Type from 1972. There you go. That's a little bit boring, but that's as sad as I was. I looked at the number plate, and I thought I'd Google it. But anyway, here we go. There's a little side skirts at the side, I think, suit it quite well, make it lower than it actually is. The decals, decals, however you pronounce it, people get upset how I pronounce it, but the livery is pretty much done in one piece on the side. Went on really easy. A little bit of glue dabbed onto that rear spoiler to put it on. Another little add addition there was... The exhaust just popping out between the little lower air dam. But that is my take on my fantasy BTCC. I really hope you liked it. Please continue to subscribe to me and like my videos. Please comment. Feel free. Say what you want. I really enjoy it. Thank you very much for looking. Until next time.